Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an FTP server on FreeNAS such that a user or group of users can upload and download information to and from your NAS via the FTP folder. Before we begin, we must ensure we have the necessary prerequisites in place. And the first prerequisite is to have FreeNAST installed and up and running on a computing device. Now, in an earlier video tutorial, I have demonstrated how to install and configure FreeNAS inside a virtual machine. And that's what I'm going to use now to demo uh, the creation of an FTP server. So, as you can see, the FreeNAS virtual machine is running. And just to show you explicitly, there is a virtual machine up and running. And there is the web address of my web administrative console for FreeNAS. So I'm going to open up my browser and go to that address and log in. 192.168.0.6 and press enter and I'm now prompted to log in with the root password that I entered in when I first initially installed the FreeNAS server into the virtual machine. Okay, so I'm now logged in to the administrative console. A second prerequisite is that you have already created and configured a RAID 5 equivalent volume in FreeNAS. Now I've already demonstrated how to do that in an earlier video. So please look it up and proceed with that video before you attempt to install and configure an FTP server. Okay. So I'm going to select storage and um, volumes and view the various volumes that I have currently configured. So I have a Stripe volume already configured from an earlier video and indeed a RAID 5 volume from an earlier video. So the first step is to create the data set that we will share via FTP. And to do that, select storage on the left hand side this time. Why not show a different manner? Expand volumes and expand RAID 5 volumes and select the option create data set. So we must choose an appropriate data set name and I suppose an obvious name is simply FTP. So let me select that there and type FTP. Perfect. Um, we shall leave the, the remaining values as um, default with one exception case sensitivity, please be sure to change that to insensitive. We just want to make it very easy for people to upload and download data. So we leave it as case sensitivity as insensitive. That's important. And everything else we can leave the same. So simply click add data set to complete the creation of the data set. And it says the data set was successfully added. The next step is to add a user that will have FTP access. So select account um, and users and then choose add user. So I'm going to accept the default user ID and then for username I'm going to be very imaginative and type FTP user. <laughs> Again this is purely for educational purposes, normally you would not do this. Um, the option to create a new primary group for the user, we shall unselect, it is not necessary. And the primary group we want to select here is FTP. Perfect. So there is a pre-configured FTP group that we're going to use. So now we want to choose an appropriate um, home directory. So to select the appropriate home directory, select Browse and then Navigate to our RAID volume and expand it. And as we can see now, there's an FTP folder there. So we're going to select that, double click, that way to double click to ensure that the path appears here. Very good. Then we shall scroll down and we shall accept the default settings for the shell. We should enter in details for the actual user so we shall call this FTP space user. And 
normally you would type an email address here and a password but we're going to leave that blank well maybe we should type it in for the moment why not FTP again this is just an example so I'm literally going to type FTP at example.org a password I'm literally going to type FTP password again this is purely for demonstration purposes FTP password okay um, so we're going to leave the remaining settings um, as the default values and then select OK to put those actions into effect. So it'll take a few moments and user successfully updated. OK. The next step now that we've created the FTP user is to give the FTP user write permissions to our FTP dataset. So we shall select storage, volumes, volume, sorry I should have I'm going to press escape. I did not mean to select volume manager. So we can see the um, FTP data set here. So I suppose the best way to change permissions is to, on the left hand side, select storage, expand the volumes option, expand the RAID 5 volume option, then expand the FT, uh, RAID 5 vol FTP op uh, option, and then select change permissions. So here now we're going to change the owner from root to the FTP user. And there we go. And we're going to change the group from wheel to the FTP group. And crucially we're going to give the owner and group full read and write access as demonstrated here. Scroll down. We shall set permissions recursively for any subdirectories that may be created. And let's put those um, changes into effect. So select change. And the mount point permissions were successfully updated. OK, we're doing well. We are almost there. There are only two more steps remaining on the server side, and they are to configure the FTP server and to run it by guaranteeing that the services are actually the FTP service is actually up and running. So first of all, to configure the FTP server, so let's navigate to the services section and then scroll down and select FTP and we're given a whole host of options. Now we can, we can specify the maximum number of connections per IP address. We can specify the maximum number of simultaneous clients. There are many options here. The maximum number of login attempts, maximum number of allowed password attempts for disconnection, and so on. Timeout, there's lots and lots of options here. There's many options. I'm only going to show you the bare minimum options that must be enabled in order to get an FTP server up and running. So. The first thing we want to do is to navigate to the FTP folder that we want to make accessible to the user. So select Browse, then expand Mount, expand RAID 5 Volume, um, expand the FTP folder, and select, F in fact, select the FTP folder as you see here. No harm expanding inside there exactly, it doesn't go any further. So having selected the FTP folder, double clicked and ensure that it appears here, select close. And let us look at um, various other options. They all look good. So we're not going to change any more options for the moment. Um, we simply select OK to activate those changes. And the FTP server was successfully updated. So lastly, we want to make sure that the FTP service is indeed running. So on the top bar, select services and scroll down. In fact, there's no need to scroll down. The FTP service is here and is currently stopped. So we need to start that now. So select start now. And I'm going to check and um, start on boot as well. OK, so the FTP service is now up and running and the FTP server is configured. 
I just realized I may have made a very subtle mistake and it's no harm that I've made that mistake because you may learn from it that you may, may make it too in the real world. When I created, uh, when I set the permissions for the data set, for the FTP data set, so as you can see here I'm selecting storage, volumes, um, the mount RAID 5 FTP and then I changed the permissions earlier so I'm going to select change permissions here and I select the owner to be FTP but in fact the user I created was not FTP the user was FTP user so I realize it's a subtle mistake I created a user called FTP user that was part of the FTP group but then I put in the wrong username here so a small little problem so to fix it as you see here ensure that the owner is FTP user Okay, it's a small subtle mistake and I'm going to affect that change by select apply permissions recursively, why not, and change. So this is the mount permissions have now been successfully updated. Okay, so it's best to um I'm gonna have to close that there. It's best to stop the service and restart it, just to ensure it picks up the new settings. There we go. Okay. Now we are finally in a position to test our FTP server from a client's perspective. So I guess the first thing we should do is to create, I suppose, a temporary file that we wish to upload from our client to the FTP server. So I've selected my C temp folder and I'm going to right click and select new and test document. And I'm going to call the file test1.txt something very simple. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is to run an FTP uh, program and I've added FileZilla to my taskbar so we now need to connect to the FTP server so just to recall the IP address is 192.168. In fact I'm just going to cut and paste it, it's sort of the easiest thing um, and under host Oops, I just want to put the IP address and not the HTTP, so I'll just fix that there. So for username, it's FTP user. Now I've made that mistake, but be aware it's FTP user, not FTP. And the password, if I remember correctly, was FTP password. And the port we're going to connect on is port 21. And I'm going to select quick connect. And directory listing, successful. So I have successfully logged in, as you can see, and retrieved the listing of the folder, of, of which, of course, there is no content at the moment. So I assume I can drag and drop. I haven't used this program in a long time, so I'm going to take the folder and drag it over. No. <laughs> so there must be an upload option. Bear with me. We can simply select the file, oops, just once, and right-click over it and select Upload, which I'm going to do now. And in theory, that should have been uploaded. So can we do a refresh there? We can see at the bottom, it says successful transfers. C temp test one was successfully uploaded. Very good. To view the file uploaded, we actually need to expand this window and scroll down and now you can see the test1.txt. So we have successfully FTP'd a file from our client to the FTP server on the FreeNAS virtual machine. And why don't we try and pull down a file and maybe this, do we have permissions? Let's try it anyway, why not? So let's try and pull down a .shrc file. I just realized that that will be a hidden file on Windows, so maybe that's not the smartest idea. <laughs> Why don't I go back to FreeNAS, run the shell, change to the folder, the FTP server, so again the volumes are all located by default in Linux under slash mount, so let's list the contents and there is a RAID 5, so CD RAID 5 file and let's view the contents of that and there is our FTP folder so let us change into that 
and again let us view the contents and there is the FTP user folder so let us CD into that and let us view the contents and there is a test1.txt file. So what I'm now going to do is create a new file um, call, I'm going to call, call it remote file <laughs> remote file dot text and touch is simply a command that creates a zero byte file so I'm going to list the contents of this folder just to verify that that file hasn't even been created and there it is there's remote file dot text so now I'm going to go back to filezilla oops excuse me wrong one and I'm going to um, refresh the file and folder lists. I'm going to scroll down, and as you can see, there is our remote file. Okay, just to verify that the C temp folder is indeed selected, which it is. Now I'm going to go back to remote file, right click over it, and select download. And lo and behold, successful transfers to C remote C slash temp remote file text is present. And just to prove that it's present, I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer and there is the remote file.txt. So we have successfully created an FTP server on the FreeNAS server residing in the virtual machine. And from our client Windows host machine, we have successfully uploaded a file, test1.txt, and we successfully downloaded a file, the remote file.txt, from the free NAS FTP server. So that's exactly what I wanted to show you in this video. Thank you very much for watching. Any comments and um, feedback, please leave comments um, at the end of the video. Thank you very much.